In the last segment, you heard part two of Dominic's interview with civil rights attorney Jonathan Moore. Now, Moore, as we know, is now taking over the case of Eric Garner, representing his family in their lawsuit against the NYPD and the city of New York in the death of Mr. Garner. Moore spoke out about why he doesn't believe the Staten Island DA is equipped to handle such a high-profile civil rights case. Moore says the feds, in fact, need to be the ones involved here. In the meantime, Autopsy results released this week in the death of Missouri teenager Michael Brown show that the 18-year-old was shot in the hand at very close range, which is significant because it would indicate that there was an apparent struggle with the police officer who fatally shot him. Uh, the report shows Brown suffered one of nine gunshot wounds while uh, in or next to Officer Darren Wilson's patrol vehicle. Police in the Ferguson, Missouri case have argued that Brown violently attacked the officer inside of the SUV and tried to take his gun. And in fact, there was lacerations and bruising on the officer uh, after the shooting. However, Brown's family says this still doesn't explain why Wilson kept firing at Brown. And it also contradicts some supposed eyewitness testimony that said that they saw Mr. Brown with his hands up at a distance when he was shot by the officer. But where I'm going with all this is, let's say whether it's because of jurisdiction, Richard, or because of evidence, or because of conflicting testimony, whatever the case may be, that they don't secure convictions against the officers, whether it be in Staten Island or in Ferguson, Missouri. Give an idea what's happening at either the state or city level or law enforcement level to prepare for a verdict that very well uh, will not uh, be greeted uh, warmly by the communities impacted by it. Well, there'll be law enforcement plans for dealing with that. Uh, one would hope that no matter how disappointed one is in a verdict. But let me do the harder part. I, I know where you're going on this, I'll get there. Now, before there's even, before even the Staten Island uh, district attorney decides whether or not he's gonna come back, let's say, with an indictment in this case, what happens that the public isn't really privy to about preparatory conversations to say before these guys are done if there isn't an indictment what happens then is the city involved at that well, point is the NYPD the, the, How does the, the, the indictment issue is a criminal the people are charged criminally the plaintiff the, the complainant in that is not the victim's family it's the people it's the people versus Jones it's not Brown versus Jones you know I get that it, my point in is the civil suit the standard of proof is I'm not talking civil I'm talking criminally now for a moment not on the civil side and on the criminal side in both of these cases whether it be Missouri or Staten Island I'm just curious how far out from before an indictment is or isn't handed down do the police already start to plan out if have, there is a reaction? They should have a they have, they plans. Have, they, they're already going through massive training There's in no Missouri, question. riot control, uh, other jurisdictions to come in. They must come up with those plans now. And the NYPD, and I, yeah, I didn't mean to cut Richard off, I wanted him to continue, but the NYPD is excellent at dealing with this. One of the things that I do like about the NYPD is it's almost a disguise, Richard. They may show you 100 officers, the NYPD, but you better believe that 2,000 officers in riot gear is two blocks out of the way where you don't see them. But once they put that 1013 out on the radio, a police officer or the commander on location, those officers and horses and everything else are immediately brought in. You spoke to more on the subject of who should or shouldn't be handling this. We, we talk about the difficult spot uh, the district attorney in Staten Island is given uh, the public he represents and the strong law enforcement uh, presence that's in Richmond County. Does he have a sense, did you get there, whether or not he's going to come back with an indictment? If you go by his body language, there will be no indictment. Oh, you if, can, oh. if you, I've um, been doing this for almost 30 body years. Body language? If you go by Mr. Moore, and I don't want to put out there, Richard, the private conversation that we had, he may, so that's why I'm referring to body well, language. Okay, well, well, because you forced my I, hand, I, <laughs> counselor. No, no further questions, Your Honor. <laughs> um, I want him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in Missouri, they, they've already made the case that in, in all likelihood there will be no indictment. Oh, Dominic, you they don't know what they are, wait, wait, stop, about. wait, stop. I do know what I'm talking about. They've already established uh, a confrontation inside the police car. That is justification for what the, they, no, it they, is let not. Let me finish. Let me finish. No, not let me, let me, gonna uh, say something. Okay, that's let me wrong. just finish, please. I, I'm bringing 30 years' experience of covering police brutality cases to make this. They've already. Why do you think they're focusing on the bullet in his hand? 
to show that there was a struggle. Why do you think they're pointing out there was blood, uh, Mr. Brown's because blood? Because it's true. Okay, let me just finish. Now, the only problem they have in Missouri is uh, the officer involved is going to have to explain why, why did you keep shooting. And they've already made a case for that when they said that Mr. Brown turned around. Now, this is their version. We don't know what the facts are. When they said Mr. Brown turned, so counsel, I'll go to you once and said that Mr. Brown was coming towards him. My prediction, there will be no indictment in Missouri, and there may not be one in Staten Island as well. At this point, there's been evidence talked about publicly that there was a struggle in the car, which seemed to be Mr. Brown's initiative. I don't know that to be the case. Even if that's true, the, uh, what Dominic just pointed out is there is a whole set of other behaviors which have not been subject to the same kind of uh, scrutiny mm -hmm. in which somebody shot somebody from 20 feet away. If the police officer had shot Mr. Brown up close, maybe. But the, 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 the fact that there was a struggle in the car is not legal justification for 90 seconds later shooting somebody from 20 feet. That's it. That's the law. I know they just gave me the wrap. I'm curious, because you do crisis management and stuff. In terms of getting out in front of the public, before there's decisions made, to try to, if not cool the tempers, at least have everybody understanding where we are, do officials have to wait until the court's finished with this? Or is there kind of a preemptive um, starting dialogue, starting conversations out there so that if and when a verdict comes back that the population question does not think is justice, um, at least, you know, um, somebody's already started this dialogue yeah, ahead of time. It's, it's, it's preemptive. With any good police department, as the NYPD is a great one, Ferguson, I think, is getting better now. Can't get worse. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they, they are well in advance. There are conversations going on with the churches, with black ministers, with community, uh, with community mm -hmm. groups, with nonprofits. I mean, that stuff has to happen in advance. I mean, uh, we, you hope it's happening in Ferguson. I know it's happening in New York. There's just no question. Okay, when we come back, everyone, um, we want to go back in time a little bit. In fact, the anniversary, some major historic moments here surrounding uh, our nation. We'll take a look at where we were uh, in the month of October. In fact, this week in October, um, both many years ago and not that many years ago. Stay with us.